Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be having a chat through this commission that I did uh, for a Kingfisher and yeah, a few ups and downs along the way. It's pretty cosy in the den today. It's tipping it down outside. It's seven in the evening. I've got my little lights on and we're feeling all a bit, yeah, a bit chilled. So yeah, this commission was from a customer who's had a couple of uh, pictures from me in the past and he found this picture on BBC Springtime, I think it was, and we found who the photographer was. And he allowed us to use his picture, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. And as long as we gave him credit, which I always do, he was happy for us to use the picture for my customer. Now there's a little bit of a, an edge on the branch that you'll see because I had to extend the branch because of the size of the photo in comparison to the bit of paper that, that we were doing it on. So it's in uh, nine by 12 and I wanted to just have enough of a border that when it went to the framers, that we had a nice border around the edge. So I extended that branch, which is why it looked very strange. It was pretty much cut and pasted from somewhere else. And then when it came to drawing, all I did was match it in so it didn't look so out of place. Now, there was a couple of issues I actually came across while doing this Kingfisher. I have done Kingfishers in the past and I found this trickier, I think, because of the scale of the feathers. The last Kingfisher I did, although he was done on a four, uh, I think the pose had a lot to do with it. So he was um, vertical rather than horizontal, which meant that I could actually get a lot more detail in. I couldn't work out how I wanted to do the feathers on the top of his head. I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted to leave negative space for the highlights, which is what I normally do, or whether I would use my slice tool to actually take out some of the color once I've got enough lay down of wax on the top of his head. In the end, I decided to actually do a bit of both. And yeah, I, I left a lot of negative space to try and keep some of the highlights nice and clean. Um, but some of the areas near the back of his head, I did actually decide that I would come in and use the slice tool instead. Um, it wasn't so much of a time saving thing. It was more because of the size of the portrait. As I said, because it was nine by 12 and his wing span took up a lot of that space, his body size is actually pretty small. His eyes quite tiny, as you can see. So, you know, I was limited with space, so I wanted to make it as not simple as possible, but my life as easy as possible. Uh, kingfishers aren't the easiest birds to draw and their feathers can get quite complicated. So I think in the end, it worked out really well and I was actually really happy with how his head turned out. I was a bit concerned halfway through that maybe I had made a bit of a boo-boo decision, but I think it all panned out in the end. I worked out all the colors as you saw at the beginning of the video. I worked those all out to begin with, roughly going on actually the colors I used on the previous Kingfisher, just so I didn't have to struggle to try and find all the colors. Again, time saving. You generally, once you've done enough of these, you generally get a feel of the colors that you need anyway. So um, yeah, I was quite happy with the turnout of his head and I was actually not looking forward so much to his body. And I think some of the reason is, is his body was actually really fluffy and when you think of feathers you think of very defined shapes you think of very defined feathers and he doesn't actually have hardly any on his belly i don't know whether he's a young kingfisher but they were very soft and very fluffy very downy uh, so there wasn't a huge amount of definition really to get in when we come around to doing his chest. And the color I felt went a little bit awry. It looked really smart once it was done, but in my head at the time, I didn't think it was actually coming out as good as it could have. But overall, when you get to the end, you'll see that actually it all came together and the colors worked really, really well. 
I'm not going to talk through the entirety of the video. I just want to really point out the bits that I am most happy with and the bits that I found the most tricky. And we've got a little while to go yet, but on his wing, as I was doing his wing, I was really concerned about the translucency of the feathers. If you um, if you look on the reference picture, you'll see actually that they're really translucent. The light is really beaming through those feathers and you can really see the difference between the layering of the feathers of the wings. So where it's partly, because it's not fully open, it's partly open, you can actually see where the feathers, feathers, feathers are all crossing over. So I was concerned that actually I was going to find that really tricky, but in the end, again, it, it worked out all right. So I was quite pleased with that. I'm not going to bother listing any of the colours that I used, but to give you a bit of an idea, I used the normals, Payne's Grey, Dark Sepias, Burnt Ochres, um, I used, uh, I want to say Ultramarine, um, I also used Dark Indigo, I'm pretty sure I used a bit of Van Dyke Brown in there, and Walnut could be wrong oh and oh, of course the Caput Mortem because you can't be without a Caput Mortem when you're doing pet portraits or animal portraits because it doesn't seem to matter what animal you draw there's always Caput Mortem in there somewhere so yeah that that got brought in as well so that gives you a bit of a rough idea I did use a couple of warm greys on his beak um, and I think I used that throughout a couple of the feathers as well off the top of my head and yeah that sort of pretty much it for the colours. I'm trying to think what the light blue was but I'm not going to remember so I'm not going to try and remember. Something I would like to bring up actually because I'm sure that some of you will look at the reference picture and then look at my drawing and go actually it's not like the reference picture. Gen the general shape and the feel and the colours and that yes they are but a lot of people come up with the argument why bother drawing if you're going to be photo realistic you might as well just take a photo and while that's true to an extent there are certain things that as an artist we decide to leave out we decide to add in we decide to alter if we don't maybe like how dark something is and maybe we want to lighten it up add a bit more detail in there then we take our artistic license and that's exactly what we do and i think it works really well and although people if they don't see the reference they'll go wow that looks like a photo and that's of course the intention what they don't realize is the differences between that reference photo and between the drawing that we have done so if you're on the side of the argument of what's the point of taking a picture which I'm sure you're not because you wouldn't be here watching this if you weren't into this type of art but yeah uh, the argument does come up quite a lot and that's pretty much my answer to it especially when you have bad reference pictures actually and I've had a few of them over my time that is the reason why you draw photo realistically because sometimes the photo just isn't good enough on that note I'm going to leave you here I'm going to let you watch the rest with my lovely relaxing music and I shall pop on at the end of the video just to say hello and again get your thoughts and uh, yeah I'll see you in a moment
so there he is in all his glory finished and yeah i'm i'm 99 happy with how he turned out as i said i'd love to find out your views and what you think of him do you like him or do you not like him do you think i could have done something differently or do you do something differently let me know let me know in the comments below have a good rest of the week